so now i will uh, welcome uh, uh, dr S uh, suman uh, for the pr secretariat talk so he will give the uh, guidance documents to support the development and implementation of the stockholm convention so mr suman uh, suman Uh, uh thank you thank you yeah. Yes, sir yeah please uh, yeah please share your screen and uh, you can start your presentation let me, thank let you let me share my screen how yeah. do i do that i don't see how i share my you screen can... you can you can see the uh, means bottom center of your uh, screen there is okay, a I, I saw it okay great yeah. thank you okay now i go to screen so i'm taking a bit i don't see my screen uh, i think you just uh, first open your presentation then afterwards you share the screen then it will be visible okay so that works that way then let me first open my presentation okay in the presentation share. mode and then share screen uh then i share screen okay share okay you see yeah perfect perfect go ahead okay great thank you boss uh good morning again uh colleagues uh distinguished delegates from the state of palestine and other experts uh, attending this online workshop uh this works up uh, as i said in the morning uh during my works uh would have been organized face to face that is what we wanted uh and so wanted to provide support whatever we could to the state of palestine so that they could prepare their names because uh palestine state of palestine became party in 2020 2018 and the nape is due since uh, 2020 um and uh, we we learned that they are having difficulty in accessing funds uh, and this is uh, uh, right now this is a, you know kind of a, a bottleneck uh, for getting funds for state of palestine but later sooner or later this is going to happen to all the parties because the stockholm convention in its article 7 requires parties to continuously update their review and update their names uh and the process is uh, you know is that the the convention is a dynamic kind of convention or the chemicals that are being used in different sectors are being evaluated assessed and once they are found to exhibit the uh you know the properties are pops and are uh, toxic to environment and and the human health they are going to be listed under the convention and uh, these and the parties are going to update their names so this is at least uh, what we can see from the past is almost every years uh, uh from 2009 every year uh, every cop has added one two or three uh, chemicals and this will go on and even now uh, the poprock which is um, uh, meeting face to face in january are reviewing three chemicals they, they, this is a ongoing process so this will keep happening and the the nip will have to be reviewed and updated and there will not be enough uh, support enough money enough uh, resource being um, dedicated for this review and update process so at one point parties will have to do it by themselves so maybe you know this might be a good uh, uh, opportunity 
or a, 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 a situation where you have to take things uh, in your hand, uh, not only relying on international um, you know, agencies for uh, financial assistance, uh, maybe we can get the financial assistance for other things, other major things where uh, it will not be possible to uh, mobilize internal resources, but for developing and uh, updating NIPS, maybe eventually will have to be done uh, through the internal resources. At least this is what it looks like uh, from, uh, you know, the train. And uh, this was um, understood by the parties uh, well. Uh, and they had, right from the beginning, the first capital in 2006, they uh, adopted the guidance on developing and updating NIP. Uh, I, I can't move the slides. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, parties realized, this, and the very first thing they did was uh, to adopt a guidance for developing of a national implementation plan for Stockholm Convention uh, by the first COP um, decision SC112. And this was uh, revised and updated. And this, this, this was this is the central um, uh, NIP guidance. This guidance uh, always, you know, almost all COP did ask parties to share uh, their experience of using this guidance and other guidances available under the convention and provide feedback on the user friendliness on the uh, in, in uh, every respect, whatever their experience is, so that this uh, guidance could be updated and increased so that it becomes uh, user friendly and uh, easy to use for parties, those who are in need. So this was uh, the guidance. And uh, uh, besides that, uh, you know, there are so many other guidances available uh, under the convention, which I am going to um, talk uh, to you um, uh, in a moment. So uh, these, and we have a dedicated uh, website uh, under this convention's website. If you go into the implementation and there you will see uh, the NIPS and under the NIPS, there is a, a menu uh, of guidance. If you click there, then you will see all, all sorts of guidances there. Uh, the guidances on developing NIPs, guidances on socioeconomic aspects uh, while developing the NIP or while implementing the NIP, and the guidances to develop inventories, and the guidances for alternatives. If POPs were to be uh, stopped, then what alternatives are available for those POPs that are uh, stopped? And also, uh, the bad babe guidance is to uh, reduce the emission of unwanted emission of uh, the UPOPs. Uh, and then other guidances on uh, you know, trading and, and waste management, all those guidances are uh, listed over there. As I just said, uh, the, the main guidance is uh, the guidance for developing national medicine plan. And uh, also uh, in uh, the second COP, they also realized that, okay, since there will be more chemical coming in the convention and then it will need parties to review and update their NIP. So there needs some kind of guidance. So they adopted a guidance uh, on the elaborated process of reviewing and updating national implementation plan for uh, the state of Palestine. This uh, is still one step of par. Uh, they, 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 they need to uh, develop their uh, initial NIP first. And then there is also step-by-step -step companion guidance on review and updating NIP that also uh, goes with the second item, elaborated process of reviewing and updating NIP. Uh, basically, this guidance, uh, the, the main guidance, as I said, it has basically five phases it has um, envisaged. The first phase 
is the establishing a coordinating mechanism and organization the uh, process of uh, developing NIP. So this is where the government will first initiate the process as being the party to the convention. It is the obligation of the party to develop and um, uh, you know endorse that uh, national implementation plan uh, for that country and then transmit that to the COPS, to the secretariat so that the the guide the the NIP is available for all the parties uh, because you know the Stockholm Convention is is uh, it's not uh, localized. This is an international convention, and also the nature of the uh, pops is that it does not stay in 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 the national boundaries. So you know, uh, one of the features is the movement transboundary movement of the uh, the, the pops. So uh, this is of the interest of all the countries around uh, the country who is producing, uh, preparing their NIP. They would want to know what policy is in place, what regulation are there. So for that reason, you know, eventually it has to be uh, transmitted uh, to the COP. So the very first step is establishing of a coordinating mechanism. And the second step would be developing once that the mechanism is in place, then the mechanism will employ, you know, with the project management team, with the experts, assessing what is the situation in the country with respect to the pops, with uh, those all listed under the convention. And once those uh, inventories are there, then country can make a decision, okay, which is more important for that country and which are less important for that country. And then, you know, priority setting, um, at the technical level, and then that is shared with the policy people, with those who are implementing, those who are coming from different sectors. So once it is being discussed there, then there is a, some kind of understanding, okay, this is what our priorities, and then based on that, uh, a plan is prepared, and that plan where the resource will come, and you know, what the government will do, and what the legislation will be made, uh, what will be the um, you know, excellent plan, all these things will come into the uh, uh, name uh, while formulating the name. And once they are formulated and they are endorsed and then submitted um, to the to the COP through the secretariat. So this is the process, the very first uh, phase. So there are guidances available for all these phases I just mentioned. So the first phase is about establishing of a coordinating mechanism and organization of the process. So this, under this uh, phase, the major work is to review the information on the sources, use and production of POPs, including stockpiles and waste, information in current national legislation and uh, institutional framework to determine the baseline situation. This is stock taking um, uh, step. So uh, stop taking at the policy level. So uh, for that, there are, you know, not everybody understand how important uh, this convention is or how important the, the, you know, dealing with the pops because policy people might not know everything about the chemicals where they are used and what kind of impact they will have on the people's health and well-being. This information needed to be shared with the policy makers, with the politicians, with the bureaucrats, with, with the high-ranking officials, for that maybe the fact sheets of the POPs that are there, they are, uh, you know, as I, you can see here, these fact sheets are very simple and they tell the story, what they are, where they are found, and what the convention intends to uh, uh, do and what uh, is expected from parties on those um, uh, chemicals. And there are, besides that, and this information is available and the link is given there. Uh, and there are uh, risk profiles and risk management evaluation documents available in the convention. And these documents, they were, uh, as I said, uh, this there is a, a committee uh, what is called POPs Review Committee that meets every year. And this committee, they have, uh, um, they, they discuss uh, 
uh, uh, uh, essays on upon receiving uh, the uh, request or uh, from any of the party to include it in in the annexes uh, of the convention. Then the process starts and they start collecting information. The party who is proposing provides the information that they have and the the scientists and all the informations are gathered and based on the you know uh, the technical data based on the, uh, the incidents that happened uh, the risk uh, uh, profiles are uh, prepared and the risk management evaluation are done and all these informations that the you know the um, assessment done by the pops review committee are available uh, in the convention website this is uh, the another uh, link i have given there so anybody can go there and uh, can understand about those chemicals those those pubs why they were banned in that country and why they were proposed to be included in the convention and what um, uh, alternatives are available all those things if that is the must or there could be there are uh, the uh, uh, easily available alternatives so these things are available in in that link and there is uh, also a um, not directly related, but very much related uh, document that is on the uh, checklist for the legislator, which is also available for the Basel Rotterdam Stockholm Convention websites. This is about if a country wanted to uh, develop a, a national legislation, what kind of uh, you know things that they should look at and what they need. So this is a kind of a, you know a model legislation, if you will you can call it. Uh, you know this this gives some idea about the type of legislation that would uh, need for parties to implement the convention successfully. So that information is also available in this link. And, uh, Besides, there are technical and financial assistance needs for the updating and um, uh, uh, implementing the need. And then whether uh, this this um, coordinating mechanism will, will will discuss about what is what is the technical need uh, to develop this need. What is the financial assistance need to develop this need? So this also is. Um, is is uh, expected uh, under this item at phase one, and the this policy level um, coordinating mechanism will also think about what are the current situation to meet these needs. Do we have money? Do we have technical expertise in the country? And do uh, are there any uh, mechanism for new uh, development update inside the country? Uh, which uh, government agencies would be most relevant and uh, what could be the work plan? How do we develop? Do we finish it in two years or we can do it in one year based on the experience and, and a lot of information we already have? Maybe, you know, this information might have been collected for different reasons and there uh, someone will have to collect, compile them and, and then work on it. So it, it might, uh, you know, uh, this information will uh, help to assess the funding need, the technical uh, assistance need. So these are, you know, and what are the uh, means, mechanism for sharing of the information? Is there a mechanism within the country to share the information? Is there any national body which uh, links, you know, with different uh, research uh, institutions, different uh, government departments, uh, NGOs, and what the what mechanism are there to share information, national information with the international uh, bodies through this uh, secretariat of Stockholm Convention? Or, uh, these things uh, are also uh, very important under the phase one. Once that is done, we know the, the resources need. We have already uh, planned how we are going to implement it or going to uh, develop this NAP. Then the very uh, important uh, step comes phase two, where we establish the inventory. As I said in the beginning, the inventory is the, the key that will tell uh, parties what are important for that country. If 
the DDT is very important or DDT is not important at all, never used in the country. If DDT was never used in the country, maybe then, the, you know, having the inventory of DDT is not necessary or uh, any making any plan, action plan on DDT might not be necessary. So it depends on, on uh, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, in this uh, inventory setting process, it needs uh, a very technical guidance and these guidance are available in the conventional website. As uh, you can see, uh, that there are links given, which gives the guidance and POPs inventory development are general and specific new POPs guidance are there, which will tell you if uh, SCCP, where SCCP is available, you know, or PBD, whichever um, POP you, you pick, there are a individual guidances available on uh, telling you where they can be available and um, who, where those information will be available. And these guidances as um, were prepared um, uh, by the convention with the help of uh, uh, international experts who have been dealing, who have been dealing with these uh, chemicals for a very long time. Those were working in the universities, working in the private sector, were working in the industries. And also the information have been collected from uh, those countries who have been uh, using these um, chemicals in the past. All the informations have been compiled in these guidances uh, to give the background information so that uh, you can relate if those background information are relevant for you. And these guidance documents, um, uh, I can tell you that uh, we have with us uh, Roland Weber, who was uh, involved in developing several in, uh, inventory guidances. So it, it, he could be a very good use. This is uh, an opportunity for you also to have uh, uh, contact with him and he will be making presentations today, tomorrow, I, I believe. Um, and then maybe also a uh, day after tomorrow. So he was the one who had been working in, in that region. He had been working in, uh, in many reasons, but also for the Arabic reason. The NIP uh, that uh, we just heard from Shirin that uh, was developed in with was also assisted by uh, Roland. So he knows the area, the, the region very well. And he is the one who had developed uh, many of the guidances and helped uh, the secretary to update them. So these... <laughs> Uh, guidance documents, as I uh, uh, showed you, uh, uh, are available in those links. And there are alternative guidances also. Um, if you, uh, you know, uh, are using one of these POPs heavily, uh, but uh, now you realize that this is uh, listed under the convention and you cannot use it any longer, then you might want to uh, know what are the alternatives available. So for that reason, there is a guidance and alternatives also, and the link is there, given there. So you can go into that link and find the alternative for all those uh, uh, pubs. Uh, and also there is a guidance and bad babe uh, for the, uh, the unintentional release pubs. Uh, and there is a toolkit for identification and quantification of these unintentional pubs. Uh, there are, uh, to develop uh, preliminary inventory of POPs, there are, uh, there are uh, you know, import-export uh, guidances uh, uh, under the Rotterdam Convention, uh, uh, you know, uh, and they are available in these links. There are gui decision guidance document. Also, Rotterdam Convention, you know, um, uh, uh, they have 51 uh, chemicals, 50 chemicals for 51 uh, uses listed under the Rotterdam Convention. And out of them, 16 chemicals are um, under the POPs also. And the Rotterdam Convention being the Convention on the Prior Informed Consent Procedure, in international trade, there are so many information. They also have a very similar structure like POPs review committee. They have the chemical review committee and that chemical review committee also like uh, the POPRA, they also do uh, assess 
about these chemicals and all the information that they have while assessing these chemicals are available there. Uh, and um, yeah, this is, and, and there are uh, national legislations, uh, uh, different countries uh, have uh, provided, uh, you know, what kind of legislation they have. These are also very useful for um, uh, people working on the pumps because, you know, uh, we, we do not uh, work in isolation now. Uh, one uh, uh, legislation that uh, helps to implement the obligation under the Stockholm Convention does help also to implement the convention on uh, Rotterdam and uh, uh, also uh, to the Basel. So there is a very good uh, synergy in implementing this convention at the national level. Uh, at international level, we have uh, we, we used to have three separate uh, secretariats uh, for the Basel Convention, Stockholm Convention, Rotterdam Convention. Now every three you know secretariat have been merged into one. And now uh, we know uh, what is happening in, in Basel Convention, in Stockholm Convention, Rotterdam Convention. In the, uh, previously, we used to be in our silos. We, we used to uh, collect information, you know, the national report, uh, national implementation plan of only one uh, convention. And if somebody wanted to learn, they could, but then there was no... Uh, uh, institutional mechanism to share those information in, in the past, but now at the secretary level we have same thing is uh, um, parties uh, thought that they can do it at the national level and it is the party who uh, thought that synergizing these three conventions at the uh, national level is the most important because you know uh, those who are dealing with the, the chemicals in the country are very, uh, and the department and the people are, uh, if not uh, always the same, but uh, from similar departments. And they know, they talk each other, uh, and then they, they are the one who, you know, uh, prepare these reports and the, uh, these uh, consultation works up. These are the same people that they sit down and discuss. So this is very important to have national discussion uh, in, in the inventories and the uh, institutional setting in the infrastructure. And besides that, uh, developing uh, preliminary inventories of POPs, assessing health and environment, this is what the, the uh, objective of this establishing the, 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 uh, the phase two uh, establishment of POP inventories. So here, there are also uh, uh, different uh, guidance available. Under the UNITAR, there is chemicalsandwaste.org. There you see many, many guidances on, on the national profile. Uh, UNITAR had been working with uh, national chemical profile for very many years. And many, many countries, those who are the parties to Basel, uh, Stockholm, Rotterdam, Convention, and their national chemical profile. So these are available there and they help uh, parties to understand what the legal situation is there, what are the chemicals uh, of the concern in that country. So these informations are there. Uh, uh, and then um, also uh, in the, uh, on, on PCB, DG and other pesticide, there are guidances and information related to PCB and environmental sound management uh, uh, of the waste, and uh, you know, open application disposal, all these informations uh, on DDT, these are available on, on the links given here. So uh, I invite you to uh, visit these links and I'm sure with uh, the information available there, it will be uh, kind of uh, uh, not easy, but it will give you the idea how you can establish the inventory, what uh, tools, what guidance would be most uh, useful for you to develop such um, uh, uh, inventories for your country. And the, the second aspect of the phase two on establishing uh, inventory is assessing health and environmental situation. And as I already told you that, you know, um, the POPROP uh, uh, process, 
they do risk profile on the, the chemicals. And in the CRC process, there is also the risk profile. So these provide the yes, health uh, and environmental uh, impact of uh, these chemicals, what has happened, all the stories, all the experiences are, are there, uh, all the assessment are there. So those, those could be very, very helpful for you to assess the health and environmental uh, impact of these uh, pops in your countries. And also in the guidance, uh, uh, there is a guidance document on the global monitoring plan under the article uh, 16 of the convention. So you can see, you know, um, they, uh, there are um, information available on what is the uh, environmental quality, what is the level of various pops in the water on the, in the air, and also in the, uh, you know, um, uh, in the body, uh, in the mother's milk. Those informations uh, you, can, you can find uh, at the link given there. And once you know the preliminary event of your POPs and assess the health and environmental impact, now uh, you, you review the institutional setting. Um, uh, what legal and institutional setting you have, for that also you, you have a guidance. As I told you that there is a guidance also on, on legal matters that is also there. And there are guidances and leveling of the products uh, uh, that is uh, that is also available in these links. So these are the very important links. Uh, I'm sure uh, you will uh, visit them and you will uh, get the benefit of this wealth of resources that is available there. There is also guidance and uh, socioeconomic assessment because this is what you know we, we found uh, the parties found very important that. Uh, uh, this industrial implementation plan, if they do not take care of the socioeconomic uh, situation of that country, then it will be kind of um, theoretical only of, you know, of uh, academic interest only. It has to touch upon on the socioeconomic aspect if the, the vulnerable community are identified. You know, most of the time what happens in the West, uh, they are dumped. There are people living nearby those uh, waste dumps, and they have, and and these are economically poor people, and they have their make their livelihood working in those waste dumps or collecting the waste and selling it in the you know market you know unofficially. So they these people you know what impact will will have uh, of this convention to these people. This is, you know, even during developing the name, if you know this thing and then you can plan it uh, properly. And while implementing also, you need to have this information so that it can be implemented uh, properly. Yeah. And there are also the guidances um, uh, is given in this link is about the calculation of action plan cost uh, on, on each of these uh, POPs, the specific POPs. So this gives tentatively what would be the cost? What are the different um, aspects uh, needed? Uh, you know, are there to deal with this particular chemical? And based on those uh, aspects, and uh, a tentative costing is has been done. So uh, this guidance was prepared, uh, I think, somewhere around uh, 2009. Now we have updated this in 2017. Is available there. In the uh, phase three, as we already discussed, it's a priority uh, assessment. Once we have the, uh, the inventory, then we know what is important and we know what is uh, not very important. The important one will be discussed and planned. And this, for that, the calculation of action plan cost is very important because this will tell you how much money is needed or how, what resources is needed to deal with that particular uh, chemical, which is uh, during this uh, assessment process came up as the priority uh, chemical. And for that, there is a very good uh, um, uh, guidance from UNITAR on organizing a national priority setting workshop. This will be very useful also. 
the end of presentation here, the, after we have this national uh, uh, institutional setup is done, an assessment of the uh, collected the information on the, uh, on the uh, uh, chemicals, the, the, the inventory is prepared. Then we have the assessment of you know, priority setting, assessing them on the uh, against the uh, priority once we have all these three things now the formulation is pretty e easy now you put them together and this is the formulation of NIP. and there are guidances on on, on this also uh, some of the basel guidances some of the iomg toolbox guidances unip guidance control control and contributing national progress and safety and the unip's uh, um, uh, lira guidance uh, legal institutional infrastructure for sound management uh, chemical and major to recovering cost of the national emissions. These, these are uh, very important uh, guidances available um, and they are uh, they can be assessed from the convention website uh, only. So these uh, I, I invite you to uh, uh, visit our uh, uh, guidance page deep pace where you have all these guidances and uh, go through these guidances and see uh, how you can use these guidances because they are they have been prepared for a very long time now and, and there is so much experience already added into it and update it has been updated all the time with the information uh, received from the parties and every cup they have been updated person have been being presented uh, or to, to the COP, and they have been taking note of these uh, changes um, in in those guidances. Once this uh, NIP is formulated uh, uh, in the previous uh, phase four, this NIP is now ready to be endorsed by the by the national government because uh, the convention initially uh, right from the beginning. Uh, 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 took uh, the strategy that this uh, need should be the part of a national strategy, not as a standalone, only for the Stockholm Convention kind of document. Otherwise, if it is only the Stockholm kind of document, then it may just go buried somewhere and nobody will pay attention to it. But if it becomes a part of the whole sustainable development strategy, then the, the whole process of implementing the you know the, uh, SDGs in the country will have to also uh, implement this uh, NIP. That's the idea, and and for that reason, it it is to be endorsed by the country as a part of the SDG, uh, part of the national strategy on the uh, uh, sound management of chemical uh, environmental management. So this once this is NIP is endorsed and that uh, uh, endorsed NIP is now communicated to the uh, uh, secretariat, transmitted to the secretariat and the secretary makes sure that this NIP is transmitted to the COP. So if, before every COP, like we are preparing for 2021 COP, the next uh, we are having the face-to-face -face, uh, segment of uh, 2021 COP in June, we are, uh, uh, presenting to the COP that which NIP we have received during this period, from last COP to this COP, all the NIPs will be presented. And then parties um, uh, will, will know that, you know, what is in, in those uh, NIPs. And um, so this is, this is the process. And in order to transmit this NIP, uh, uh, the parties needed also uh, to you know uh, transmit these NIPs through the official channel. Many a times, what happens? Uh, there are the NIP uh, uh, development uh, projects, and the project in charge, who may be a consultant, uh, tries to submit it to the secretary, and secretary will not accept it because it is. The national document it is the the part of the national sustainable development strategy so it has to submit it uh, to the secretariat through official means through the diplomatic channel through the official contact point 
So this is an official uh, document. This is how the, the deed is transmitted. And, the, uh, and for every uh, phase, there are guidelines available. With this, uh, I, I finish my the presentation. If there are any questions, queries, uh, I'm available. I'm, I'm right here. Thank you very much for your kind yes. attention. Thank you so much, Suman. Uh, so I am inviting, if there is any intervention, uh, please raise your hand and make a quick intervention. Yeah, Sherin, please go ahead. Yeah, I have a note. Thank you, Mr. Suman. Uh, Mr. Suman can be be Yusuf Lukum. Is they testahedemo a website, a khas Stockholm, for in Nukum Tileo, a guidelines, our guidance, our hotot, a shade, a litim shali. هو بصراحة الموضوع محتاج اللي انتوا تتعايشوا مع الـ مع الويب سايت شوية لأن الويب سايت ممتلئ بالبيانات فهو مش من أول مرة هتعرفوا يعني لازم تقسموا نفسكوا شوية كل واحد مسؤول عن حاجة معينة ويبتدي يشتغل عليها كل المواد موجود لها جايد لاينز وكل المحاضرات والشرح وطريقة البحث موجودة في الجايد لاينز أي كويشنير أو الاستبيان موجود في الجايد لاينز الجايد لاينز هي بتوضح لكم المصادر الهيستوري والباك جراوند طريقة البحث عن طريق الكويشنير طريقة الحسابات الفاكتورز اللي احنا بنستخدمها كمان ايه هي النقاط المفروض تتغطى اثناء كتابة التقرير فالجايد لاينز لكل بالنسبة ليكم لو هتقسموا نفسكم مجموعات بتخص كل المواد يعني لو هنتكلم عن الفاير فايتنج فوم مثلا بنتكلم عن مادة البي فوز يبقى تكون في تيم او شخص او شخصين مختصين ويدرسوا الجايد لاينز كويس جدا هيلاقوا نفسهم بيشتغلوا بسلاسة يعني دي نقطة حبيت أوضحها لكم إن الجايد لاينز مهمة جدا 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 وهي اللي هتخليكم تعرفوا تشتغلوا يا ريت إنكم تدرسوها بدقة وخدوا وقتكم لأن من غير هتوه أنا من خلال محاضراتي مستخدمة الكوشنير اللي جوا الجايد لاينز وعمله له اللي هو ترجمة علشان كل الموجودين يفهموا بكل الطرق السهلة وإن شاء الله المحاضرات اللي بكرة هتكون واضحة وهتساعدكم إزاي تعملوا الانفنتوري على المواد الجديدة ودلوقتي هيكون في محاضرة للدكتور رونالد عن اليو بوبس اللي هي الان انتنشنال المنتجة عن غير عمد وهيكون لي ترجمة بعد المحاضرة الخاصة بدكتور رونالد وشكرا أي سؤال Thank you, okay. Sherry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, okay, Ziyad, uh, go ahead. Uh, the صوت مش واضح يا زياد. صوت مش واضح. صوتك شوي صغيري. واضح مجموع. لا يا زياد بس هو مسموع شوي صغيري بس علي صوتك أكثر أو بتقرب على المايك أكثر هيك واضح هيك منيح يا زياد يعني بس مش مكتير منيح تفضل علي صوتك شوي Uh, I think uh, Ziad have some connection problem. I think because uh, we couldn't uh, uh, understand uh, like uh, his voice. Uh, so I'm giving the floor to Atif Jabir. Atif. Okay. Okay. You hear me? Yeah. Please. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank actually Mr. Sharma for his uh, presentation. Uh, but uh, I would like to to mention here something. Uh, the situation. 
maybe in Palestine a little bit uh, different, and we have maybe some uh, constraints, some problems. We have uh, we have uh, different uh, territories, uh, different areas. We are talking about the West Bank. We are talking about Gaza Strip. We are talking about the, Palestine, the Israeli occupation. Uh, so actually my concern and my question, uh, while starting developing our national implementation plan and survey, we might have, you know, uh, some problems with, uh, you know, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, getting exact information about uh, the chemicals, which uh, pesticides, which is important from Israel. Sometimes it is... Uh, the trade name is, is different from the chemical formula. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes the, the moving of experts between Gaza, the West Bank, uh, sometimes the, the Israeli occupation is, uh, is not easy to provide uh, actually the data. So I don't know whether UNIB or the Secretariat can, uh, you know, in this field uh, or uh, maybe dealing with the other similar situation and maybe in the world, Arab countries. I don't know. I, I don't think that we have a similar situation like here in Palestine. The, still, we have occupation in the world, but uh, it's really a difficult uh, you know, situation uh, when uh, we might face some problems while implementing or developing our you know, NIPs. So I don't know whether the Secretariat, uh, the, the centers in Kuwait, they can uh, help or support in this regard. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Javier, for your question. Yeah. I, 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 I do not really know how can I answer you about the uh, national situation. Um, how, how, how can the Secretariat uh, help you? On the political side, uh, you understand you know, this is something beyond us, we, we, we do not really uh, can be any help. But on the technical side, when you uh, need information uh, on, on anything, on any chemicals that are related with the convention, as I said, there are information available, there are experience available, these NIPs that are already there in the website, uh, transmitted by the parties. That's the, the the reason why they have been shared with all the parties. So you you can know what is happening, what chemicals are available in your neighboring countries because they have already uh, transmitted their NIPs and they are there. So you can know what uh, trade name, what uh, you know, uh, generic name those chemicals were and they've been using, how much they've been produced, how much they've been imported. All this information are available from the neighboring countries. And based on that, you can make your uh, you know, uh, plan. That is uh, what uh, I could uh, say. Uh, besides that, uh, I, I have um, my sympathies. Uh, I agree totally, you know, it's not easy job for you uh, to prepare your name, uh, and I think some of uh, the parties around you, as you mentioned, Israel. I think Israel is not even the party to Stockholm Convention, uh, uh, so you may we we may not have their name uh, for that reason. Uh, other countries, I think, from your region, have submitted, have transmitted their names, and those information uh, would be available for you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know I, I have not answered your question, uh, uh, but this Mr. is... Chairman. Yes. Thank, thank you, actually. It's clear. I know that all the information, uh, the details, how to start. I mean, I appreciate your, uh, your uh, presentation, but, you know, my concern is uh, that UNIB, uh, the Secretariat, they can, maybe they can help and support in this regard because, you know, Israel signed this convention long time ago, and uh, up till now, they did not develop their national implementation plan. If they develop their national implementation plan, we can get a lot of information about the availability of these chemicals in their, in their situation. Because, uh, but the unit, the secretariat, they can, you know, push and they can 
uh, you know, do some efforts uh, asking the Israeli uh, that you, why not up till now you didn't, it's not the problem of money. Why up till now you did not develop your implementation plan? Uh, because I am sure that if they are not cooperative in this regard, uh, because most of these waste, chemicals, pesticides we are talking about, it's not, you know, manufactured in our uh, areas. It is imported uh, from their side. So uh, this is from the beginning. I would like to raise this issue because it's an important issue. Uh, Mr. Zeber, as a, uh, Mr. Zeber, sorry. Uh, I, I just mentioned uh, before, I don't think uh, Israel is a party to the Stockholm Convention. They have not ratified this convention yet. For that reason... They are not party and they, they, you know, if they are not the party, then they have no obligation to transmit their name. So uh, Israel is not party to the Stockholm Convention. It's party to the Basel Convention, but not uh, to the Stockholm Convention. But what I, what actually what I have seen in the website that they have signed, maybe they did not yes. ratify signing the convention, is, is but they've thing. signed. Yeah, they signed it when it was uh, open for plenty potential. They participated in the negotiation, and when it was open uh, for signature, they signed it. But only signing uh, is not uh, sufficient for that to become a party. You have to uh, ratify that in in, in your country uh, by the parliament or by the government, the president, uh, whatever uh, legal uh, system you have. So it has to be ratified and then communicated to the uh, depository. Uh, to the New York, telling that, you know, UN headquarter, uh, there is a depository of international instruments. There they have to uh, inform that uh, this country has ratified this convention. This part, Israel has not done yet. So they have not ratified the convention. They are not the party. Uh, so they do not have obligation of preparing and transmitting their name. So, so that's why, Mr. Sharma, because I have seen in their website in their Ministry of Environment that they are afraid of, from some um, uh, industry, some manufacturer of chemicals, that they might have some bobs available in their uh, territory. But uh, that might be one of the reasons that they didn't ratify. I have seen somewhere in their website that they might expect the availability of certain bobs in their areas. Anyway, uh, we have, you know, together, uh, we have to, you know, to be uh, aware of uh, of. Uh, of this uh, of this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding. Um, I think I can see many hand over here. So I think Atif has finished. Uh, now I think Bilal, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Schumann, related to the Israeli side. Even the, the Israeli side, sign it or not sign it, they will not support us. We know that. Uh, this is for Dr. Atif. Shomer, I go through uh, more, mostly through this guide. I agree, totally agree with the Shreed when I see this guide. Died. It's really hard to, uh, to follow it. So my suggestion, I through the chat with the Yasser, I inform him that we need for this guideline like uh, uh, training because it's really complex. It's related really, uh, engineering with laws, with uh, economics, and uh, you know many things through inside it. So it's my suggestion to the asset that we need a workshop related to this guideline because we cannot start it. Uh, go to the our national plan, and we didn't know this guideline. How we can do our, what we should do uh, through it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bilal. Uh, this workshop is the first uh, uh, of its kind. The process initiated, at least I understand now, the process of NIP development in Israel is initiated. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, in Palestine is, is initiated now. Uh, with this, uh, we have been able to bring the experts on, on the topics. Now you know, uh, we, after this workshop, you will be able to contact uh, Roland and you will be able to contact Hassan, the Kuwait Regional Center. You will be able to contact uh, other experts that will be participating here, uh, like Serene and others. 
So, uh, you know, the process started. Now we, we see that um, if, you know, time and uh, resource allowed, we will definitely uh, want to have a national workshop for you in, in Palestine, uh, a face-to-face -face one that can also be done. Uh, maybe uh, right now it might not be that uh, possible uh, because I, I, I'm just saying that, you know, we do not have a uh, resource and uh, at this moment to do that. And also uh, the pandemic situation is still not uh, over. So we cannot really have a face-to-face -face, uh, workshop right now. But in future, yes, we can, we, can, we can do that. That is possible. And also the secretary will try uh, uh, help you finding national, international experts and this is this is the uh, you know uh, uh, what you call the initiating process already. So through this workshop, you know the experts, you know the uh, parties, you know the regional center who have developed uh, assisted their country to develop the NIP. So now the process is started. Now we we take one step at a time, and I'm sure we will will get there. It will take some time, but we will get there. Thank you, Bilal, for your uh, intervention. Yeah, uh, thank you, Suman. Uh, thank you, Bilal. Thank you, Yasser.